This is Bob Sansevier. I'm here with fellow Pioneer Press sports columnists Tom Powers and Charlie the Shooter Walters. We're going to talk about the top sports stories of the last decade, or as Shooter's been known to say, decade. <laughs> Number one on the list for the last decade, the uh, sports are as picked by members of the Pioneer Press Sports Department, the Vikings signing Brett Favre. Uh, number two is Kirby Puckett's death. The third was the Wild franchise beginning the XL Center opening. The fourth one was the Twins drafting Joe Maurer. Fifth on the list was Herb Brooks' death. Sixth was the Twins almost being contracted and still reaching the ALCS. Seventh was the after effects of the Gophers being sanctioned for uh, academic fraud. The eighth were the Twins and Gophers getting new stadium, stadiums while the poor Vikings have to wait. Ninth, Kevin Garnett traded by the Wolves. And tenth, Vikings trading wide receiver Randy Moss. I think, you, I mean, that first one... It's certainly the biggest sports story of this year. I don't know if it would be the biggest one of the last decade. You can make arguments either way. Tom, what's your, how do you feel about that one? No, I think it's, we don't know what's going to happen yet. I mean, if, if he leads him to a Super Bowl, and then, then it would be very, very high. But as of right now, it's, I think it's too quick to judge. I think the fact that the Twins are almost disappeared and then won the American League Championship Series or reached the American League Championship Series is the biggest story of the, of the decade. If they hadn't, they still might have been contracted, but that was sort of the beginning, the new beginning for the Twins in 2002. Well, I'm still a little surprised that it would be as low as sixth on the list. Charlie, what about you? You, uh, you would I you disagree. move things around a bit? I disagree entirely on a contra contraction. I don't think for a moment that that was ever real. I think it was a, it was a uh, bluff to the extreme by Paulette, and uh, I never believed it for a moment. Yeah. You were your birdies. Some of my birdies told me that. That uh, little birdie said. Well, I hope that little birdie might have just frozen and fell off the tree because that, the, that, one, that little birdie happened to be the uh, commissioner of baseball. Yeah, but well, <laughs> what's he going to say afterwards? I know, well, I mean, I got him alone. I got him alone in the corner. He spent a lot of the Polad spent a lot of money to fight that ruling in court. So if it was a bluff, it was a very expensive. Well, I, I think it was. I and know. plus, all the Twins personnel were called in by the president and said, "You're all free agents to look right, for another job." Right, right. All part of the deal. Well, I, I mean, I, 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 the thing about Favre, obviously. Like I said, huge story this year. But I do think that uh, the wild beginning and uh, and coming and playing at the X and uh, the Twins drafting Maurer would go, uh, you know, were higher, would be higher on my list. And also, we haven't had, we did the list of uh, sports figures, nobody from the University of Minnesota, but the ripple effect and the people's lives impacted by the academic fraud, that did have a great uh, you know, a great impact on the coaches there now and people that have lost jobs because of it and also have gotten jobs because of it. What about the trading of uh, Garnett and the Vikings uh, unloading Randy Moss. I guess it it, belong, it it probably belongs pretty much where it is toward the bottom of the list, but significant because uh, things went one way for the uh, the Vikings that haven't suffered greatly by losing him. The Timberwolves, they've just been horrific since he's been gone. Yeah, that was uh, those were a couple of <laughs> those were a couple of key moves at the time. The Garnett thing was one of a series of bad trades to Boston. I mean, he had a go, but as usual, Kevin McHale, you know, got twenty cents on the dollar for. For a trade and Randy Moss you know it's an interesting story because there were reports that he wasn't going to come back here he didn't want to be here that he had asked through channels to be to be traded so so I know the Vikings get some get some heat for trading him but it's my understanding that he didn't want to be here anymore well it's part of that and also I don't think Mike I think Mike Tice wanted to have a season without turmoil and I think he didn't have a problem with him going now the two two of the uh the top sports stories number two and number five on the list are the deaths of Kirby Puckett and Herb Brooks now as we reflect back on it, I think Brooks is certainly his death was more shocking because of how it happened. In a you know he ran off the road and apparently had fallen asleep. But Kirby Puckett's from people that knew him. I mean, he talked for years that he didn't think he'd make it to fifty. So I don't know that people certainly it impacted people's lives. But I don't know people that knew him were greatly shocked because he had put on a you know a decent amount of weight and hadn't hadn't been in great ill health. But it didn't. Do you feel it really didn't shock anyone? No, it didn't. First of all, Herb Brooks though was a much bigger international story because the guy had more of a world presence and his effect on the game. So that was really a major deal. But Puckett had a grip on people here unlike any other athlete I've ever seen. Um, I remember one time he called my house at 7 o'clock in the morning for something, and my wife answered the phone, and she's all breathless coming in to wake me up. And I said, what? She says, Kirby Puckett's on the phone. I said, no, tell him I'll call him later. And she, she gives me a shot and says, you get up and answer this phone. It's Kirby Puckett. She sided with him over me. So he just had a grip on people. Like Shooter, the... Uh and Tom is right. Puckett had a hold on this, uh, you know, this state unlike any other athlete. Is there uh, someone that you see as, as Joe Maurer? Can he do what, uh, you know, fascinate the, the, the state the way Puckett did, or has he already? Or Adrian Peterson? Well, they're or different. Or someone else? Well, they're different. Maurer and Puckett are different people. Maurer just goes out, plays a game, excels, hits, hits, hits. And uh, Puck was, as Tom said, was chirping around the, 
clubhouse all the time. Everybody was gathered around him. He was always fun that thing. Where Maurer is just this quiet kid, kind of dull, really, and uh, in his own with his personality. And, and so it's they're, they're some say the same of you when well, you played. Well, Tom always says that. <laughs> how, do, how do they know he wasn't around long enough? <laughs> Four days and forty nights. <laughs> Rained every day. <laughs> All right. This is Bob Sansevier with Tom Powers and Charlie Walters. And a decade from now, we'll talk about this list again. Or as Tom mentioned, we did the sports figure. We'll visit Shooter in the home. <laughs>